In this video, I am going to demonstrate um, two of Excel's what if tools. There are really four tools. We're going to talk about the two easiest ones here, and I will do other videos for the harder ones. So the two tools we're going to use here are Goal Seek and Data Tables. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to build a spreadsheet that calculates um, the mortgage payment, assuming <clears throat> how much you're going to borrow, what's the mortgage rate, and how long you're going to borrow for. So I'm going to use some, do some simple calculations, and then we're going to look at, we're going to use the goal seek to figure out how much can we borrow if we can afford a certain payment. And then we will use the data tables to look at the effects of different interest rates and perhaps different terms. So do we borrow for 30 years or 15 years or that sort of thing? Okay, so first let me build the spreadsheet. Um, we've got a mortgage amount. Let's call that mortgage amount. We've got a mortgage rate. And we've got a mortgage term. So how long are we borrowing for? I'm going to format all of those with heading two and we'll have a mortgage payment. It's going to be the longest one. We'll make sure that's heading two. I'll double click on the boundary between A and B to get the column to be wide enough. These are all inputs. This is going to be my output. All right, so the mortgage amount, let's borrow $100,000. Oops, let's change the format of this. So control one, tab accounting zero mortgage rate let's do five percent mortgage term let's just do a standard u.s mortgage of 30 years mortgage payment remember the way the mortgage works or the way these formulas work is we're going to get a negative number out of money that we have to pay and a positive number for money that we receive most people don't talk about their mortgage payment as negative so i'm going to take the opposite of the payment rate is divided by 12. The term is times 12. So again, the per period is the mortgage rate, which is annualized over 12. The mortgage term, 30 years, 12 months a year, 360 payments. Present value is $100,000. Our mortgage payment is $536.82. Now let's say, for example, we thought to ourselves, well, wait a second, I can afford a $750 monthly payment, not a $536 payment. How much can I borrow? So that's our goal seek. We can go to data, the data ribbon. What if analysis, goal seek. This has three cells, so it's got the set cell choose a cell, set it to a value by changing something else. So in our case, we're gonna set the mortgage payment, cell B5, to $750 by changing the amount we borrow. Click OK, changes that to $750. So instead of borrowing $100,000, we can borrow $139,711 and we have a mortgage payment of $750. So we can play around with that. Let's say I realized I could afford $1,000. What if goal seek set cell B5 to 1,000 by changing the mortgage amount? Now this is a little bit of a pointless example because I could alternatively, I'll just check it, use the present value formula, the rate divided by 12, the number of periods times 12, the payment, negative because we're paying it out and it will tell me $186,282. So we don't need to use goal seek for this. We could have just used the PV function, but I just wanted to demonstrate the functionality here. Okay, so we can work from pretty much anything we want. What's the mortgage payment? What can we borrow and that sort of thing. Now, one feature of Excel for goal seek here, it didn't really matter. Our numbers are pretty big, but sometimes you're trying to solve for a relatively small number and Excel won't get that close. So we can go to the file 
We can do this in two ways. One's File, Options, Formulas, and we can change the maximum change. So if we change this to a smaller number, 0, 0.00, add a couple zeros in here, we're going to get a more accurate result. Now, in our case, the number we're looking for is a on the order of 1,000, and so it doesn't matter. But if we were looking for a rate, then it might matter. The, degree, the accuracy map probably matters more. Okay, so that's one thing that we can do with that. So that's goal seek. So let's go back, make our mortgage of $100,000, $536.82. Okay, so that's goal seek. The second feature that I want to show you under what if analysis is a data table. So a data table, what that lets me do is do a calculation, let's say the mortgage payment in this case, for a variety of inputs. Now there's one, a one-dimensional data table and a two-dimensional data table. So let's set that up here. So my calculation, we're going to put that in the top right cell, the thing that I want to calculate. I'll just make that the mortgage payment. And then I'm going to have some inputs. In my case, I'm going to look at the mortgage rates. And so let's have mortgage rates from 3% to, let's make it 7% uh, by a half. So 0.5%. So there's 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5. And that's 7. There we go. Perfect. So that's up to 7. I don't want number. I want percent. Two decimal places. There we go. These are inputs because I can change them. So let's go back to home, style, input. This is a calculation. This is the calculation I'm interested in. These are all going to be outputs. So the data table, I select my range, including that top cell, which is blank. It's got all my inputs and it's got the calculation I'm interested in repeating. I go to data. What if data table, and it's got two inputs, a row input cell and a column input cell. My data is in a column, so we're going to go for the column input cell. My data represents the mortgage rate, so I'm going to make my column input be the mortgage rate. Click OK. Let me format that in a nicer way. One, let's make that, uh, let's be like the other one, currency. There we go. OK. So it says if the mortgage rate is 3%, the payment's $421. If it's 5%, it's $536. 6%, $599, and so on. We can generate these numbers by simply typing in, if we do 6% into our mortgage rate, we get $599.55. So this is just a much more efficient way of calculating these numbers than doing them one by one and then putting them somewhere. Second, if we change anything else, $125,000, you'll see everything updates, right? Mortgage rate 6%, $749. It's done the calculation. Everything's updated. Okay. We can also do this in a two-dimensional way. So let's try the following. Let's take these numbers again. So the same interest rates, same mortgage rates. And this time we're going to think about a 15, a 20, or a 30 year mortgage. So we're going to change the term as well. And we want to figure out our payments. So now in the top left corner, that's a calculation. These are going to be the outputs. Let's format them as currency, two decimal places. If we select the whole range, data, what if, data table, okay, the row input, the things in the row, is the term, the column input, things in the column, is the mortgage rate, click OK, it looks like we'll make some things a little bit bigger, and we can see here are the payments required for different mortgage terms in different rates. So if the rate were, let's say, 4%, for the 20-year term, the payment's $757. So 4% for the 20-year term, $757. So 
so this is just a shortcut to be able to calculate all sorts of results. We call this what if analysis because we can answer what if all these things happen. We can build a little table with information to see how things work. One last feature here. Feature. One last detail of Excel. So if we look at this spreadsheet right now, we can the spreadsheet updates. Let's start at 4%. Oops. Can't do that. Start at 4%. Instead of 3%, everything updates. Right? Start this table at 4%. Let's say we did a 25-year mortgage instead of a 20-year mortgage. Everything updates automatically. Now, I don't like this feature, but it exists and I want to let you know about it because some people do like this feature. So in my way of thinking about spreadsheets, this is a spreadsheet. It's really, really fast. It's doing a really simple calculation. It recalculates very, very quickly. If I update anything in my spreadsheet, everything updates really, really quickly. No big deal. I don't worry about it. Okay. There are three ways to set up a spreadsheet to recalculate. So this one is an automatic recalculation. Everything updates all at once. I like this for simple spreadsheets that don't take very long to recalculate. Every time I touch any number, everything pretty much automatically updates and everything's always up to date. The other way I like my spreadsheet set up is if I have a spreadsheet which is really slow to calculate, I used to work in spreadsheets that took like 20 minutes to calculate. Okay, if it's really slow, then I don't want Excel to go start up. If this took 20 minutes every time I changed something and I was going to change $150,000 to $125,000 and change the term from 25 years to 30 years, well, I don't want Excel to start recalculating, start that 20 or 30 minute clock ticking until I've updated everything. So I often on a really complex spreadsheet will set the recalculation style from automatic to manual, which means that I have to hit the F9 key in order to recalculate my spreadsheet. There's one more version, which is automatic except data tables. I really don't like this feature because I either want to know that I need to, to be ensure, ensure that my spreadsheet is up to date, I have to recalculate it, F9, manual recalculation, or I never have to think about it, it's always right. I don't like a world where sometimes it's right and sometimes it's not because, for example, we could use these results somewhere else in my spreadsheet. And that somewhere else in the spreadsheet would then only recalculate or be up to date if I recalculated the data tables F9, but other parts of my spreadsheet might be up to date. And unless I really know my spreadsheet, it's going to be hard to keep track of which. So let me show you where to find these things. It is in the file ribbon, backstage view. It's called the file. Click on file. It brings up the backstage view. Options, formulas. So this is the same place we were when we were changing the for goal seek, how much we change, how much maximum changes. Workbook calculation. We've got three choices: automatic, manual, automatic accept data tables. So automatic is what we've been in. Manual. So this is my other version that I like. So we change things. Nothing updates. Right? Mortgage payments don't update. Data tables don't update. Nothing updates. Recalculate my spreadsheet everything updates. So this is a great way to set up a spreadsheet, which takes a long time. I want to be able to change things without my spreadsheet trying to recalculate. Let's say every recalculation takes five minutes. Every time I change things, that's another five minutes. So instead, change everything I'm interested in changing, recalculate the spreadsheet, and it updates. So. I like manual. The one I don't like because it's the middle ground. Formulas, so file, which gets backstage view, formulas, options, automatic accept data tables. So what this does is the calculations that are not part of a data table 
update automatically. You can see the mortgage payment changing as I change information. The data tables do not. <clears throat> I have to recalculate my spreadsheet F9 in order to get those to update. That to me seems like not a great feature because now my spreadsheet's mixed. It's in the state where some things are updated and some things aren't. The reason it exists is that if you've got a you know, medium slow spreadsheet and you add a data table, the data tables might re take a long time to recalculate. The rest of the spreadsheet doesn't. You spend most of your time in the rest of the spreadsheet, therefore you're okay with it. Personally, I don't like that paradigm. I want my spreadsheets to either be completely updated or not updated at all. I'd like to be in that kind of a world. Obviously, I can take the results of the data table and do things with them, which means that other results in my spreadsheet are not updated automatically, even though some things are changing. So instead, I'd like to be in one of those two worlds. Everything's automatic, including the data table, or nothing's automatic. I have to recalculate my spreadsheet every time. If I wanted the data table functionality in a spreadsheet that was slow, and I didn't want the data table to update every time I recalculated my spreadsheet, because obviously here's one calculation. I'm doing it nine more times in this data table and 27 more times in this data table. So that could be really slow. If I had some information I wanted to calculate every once in a while, but didn't want it to update every time I recalculated my spreadsheet, I probably end, the, end up in Visual Basic. Add a little button to my spreadsheet, which calculates these numbers on demand. Okay, those were two what-if tools in Excel. The first one, they're both found on the data ribbon. Under what-if, we've looked at goal seek, we've looked at the data table, we've not yet looked at scenario manager, so that'll be a later video, and we've not looked at another tool called the solver. You have to install that, but again, I think it's a really powerful tool, and we'll look at that in a separate video as well.